right? Sometimes you can't factor, you can't take the square root on both sides. So you might have to complete the square. Here, notice that my form doesn't look like the form. ax squared plus bx is equal to c. Before it was equal to zero. Remember, c was on the left side. So c in this case is on the right side. And in this case, a has to be equal to one. So there shouldn't be anything in front of that x squared. Now what you'll do is that you look at the number in front of the b, I'm sorry, in front of the x, b. What you're gonna do is you're gonna divide it by two and square it and add it to the left side. Remember, it's an equation, so you can keep things equal. Whatever you add to the left side, you'll add to the right side. Okay. Let me go ahead and start working one out so you can see the steps better. All right. I know this one can be done by factory, but I'm going to go ahead and complete the square on this one so you can see how to do it. Now here I'm going to have to move that 4 to the other side so that I can just keep my uh, 2x's on the left side. So x squared plus 5x is equal to negative 4. So that's my first step in completing squares. By the way, if I had a number here, let's say 3, if I had the number 3 here, I need to get rid of it. To do that, I would have to divide every term by 3. Because notice that 3 by 3 is equal to 1. So that's gone. And now I have these numbers. Luckily, I don't. So I'm going to go ahead and start completing the square here. So I'm going to rewrite this over. x squared plus 5x, leave a space, minus 4. To complete the square, I look at this number. In this case, it's a positive 5. So, plus 5 over 2 squared. Remember, you always divide it by 2 squared, whatever b is there. Since I added that on this side, I'll have to do the same on the other side. Plus 5 over 2 squared. Now I'm not going to work anything out here, but I will on the right side. I noticed that 5 squared and 2 squared, so minus 4 plus 25 over 4. I need to go ahead and add these together. 9 over 4. Here, I'm not going to go ahead and work this out. Look what happens. I'm just going to write x plus 5 over 2 squared. That's what happens when you, when you uh, if you broke it down, if you took its factors. So, x plus 5 over 2 squared. Notice that it's what you have in here. So, 5 over 2, 5 over 2 and the whole thing is squared. If I went ahead and worked this out, if I actually uh, split it and foiled it, I'm gonna get this answer back again. So I brought it down here, and now notice what I have. I have something, one big term, squared, equal to something that's, that I can take the square of, uh, I'm sorry, the square root of. So I can do what I did before. The reason you complete the square is so that you can take the square root on the left and the right side, just like before. So square root, square root. This becomes 5 plus 5 over 2 equal to positive or negative. Well, the square root of 9 is 3, the square root of 4 is 2. By the way, be sure to bring this sign down so that it includes that denominator also. Now I'll do my split. X plus 5 over 2 is equal to positive 3 over 2. Or x plus 5 over 2 is equal to negative 3 over 2. I'm just going to go ahead and solve it. Minus 5 over 2 minus 5 over 2. X is equal to negative 2 over 2 which is negative 1, and here, minus 5 over 2, 
2 minus 5 over 2. Next is equal to negative 8 over 2, which is negative 4. So my solution set is negative 4, negative 1. There. All right, let me try one more. I'm going to go ahead and complete this square. Now notice that I already have my C on the right side, so I can go ahead and start. Minus 4x, leave a space, equals to 5 over 2. I'm going to take this B. So, let me show you what happens here. Negative 4 over 2 squared, right? So we take this B, divide it by 2, square it. I get negative 2 squared, which is 4. So, and that's a positive 4, so plus 4, plus 4. Here, remember that you write x. This, before you squared it, remember it's before I squared, so right here I'm going to write minus 2. And here, when I add this, I should get, let's see, 1 times 2, 2, 13 over 2. Now, notice I have the one term squared equals something else, so I'll take the square root on both sides. So, I get x minus 2 equal 2. Now here, depending on your teacher, depending on the kind of professor you have, they might want you to approximate that or just leave it alone. Okay? If you're going to approximate that, go ahead and use your calculator. If they ask you to leave it alone, then this is what you'll do. Notice that it's two separate problems. x minus 2 equals positive square root of 13 over 2, or x minus 2 is equal to negative square root of 13 over 2. When I add 2 here, plus 2 plus 2, I'll write my answer as, fo as follows. 2, and this is positive, so plus square root of 13 over 2. That's my answer. Or, when I add it here, plus 2 plus 2, I'll write the x equal to 2 minus square root of 13 over 2. Okay. And this could be my solution set. Go ahead and try these problems out. I'll show you the answers in 3, 2, 1. Here are your answers. I hope you got them right. Alright. Here's my favorite. If nothing is working, you can always go ahead and use the quadratic equation given as such negative b plus or minus so here's your split once you get to this point is what we'll split it to two sides the square root of the whole thing b squared minus 4ac over 2a usually uh, what people mess up is right here at negative b so here you'll be taking the opposite of b so let's say your b is 4 use negative 4 if your b is negative 7 then your behavior would be positive 7. Now, you should have heard that about the discriminant, which is what's in here. Notice that all this is inside a square root. So, if what's in there is greater than 0, you're going to have two solutions. Okay, and they're, and they're both different. They're both going to be uh, unique. If it's equal to 0, notice what happens. The square root of 0, okay, all of this is gone. And this is, this is going to end up saying plus or minus zero. It's not going to change your answer, so that means that you're only going to get one solution. But if you ever get in here something that says that's negative, okay, that's less than zero, notice that, and you can try putting this in your calculator. Go ahead and try to find the square root of a negative number. It's going to say error because those are imaginary numbers. So hence, there are no solutions, no real solutions, all right? Let's try some out, one of each. All right, this is our problem. 
3x squared minus 5x plus 1 equal to 0. What I do right here is I write down my variable. So I know that a is 3, b is negative 5. Okay, why? Because there's a minus sign in front of it. So negative 5, and c is positive 1. And my equation is negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Now I'll go ahead and substitute. Negative b, so the opposite of negative 5 is positive 5. So 5 plus or minus square root of b squared, so that's negative 5 squared minus 4 times a, a is 3, and c is 1, over 2a, so 2, times 3. As long as you're keeping everything neat, this shouldn't be a big problem, right? So I not, I'm, nothing's happening here, so I'm just going to rewrite it. 5 plus or minus, and let's see. This is... 25, so 25 minus 12, and I can see here that 25 minus 12 is a positive answer, so my discriminants tell me that I'm going to have two answers here, over 6. Alright, let's see, 5 plus or minus the square root of 13 over 6. Now, depending on what kind of teacher you have, they might make you break it down further to get an approximation, or they'll let you leave it like this. All right, what if you get something like this? Notice that my a here is a fraction. Okay, I have the denominator there. I can go ahead and try to use these numbers, but you know what? I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that too. To do that, notice that I want to get rid of the denominator. So I'm going to multiply everything by 2. That's the denominator there. So look at what I get. I get 25x squared minus 60x plus 36 equal to zero. So my a is 25, my b is negative 60, and my c is 36. All right, let me go ahead and substitute. Now normally when I, if I'm taking a test, at the very top of my test, I'll write down things that I know I'm going to use. So there I would have written the quadratic equation. I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite it over so you can see how I'm substituting. So negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So negative b, so the opposite of negative 60 is 60 plus or minus the square root of negative 60 squared minus 4 times 25 times 36 over 2 what was my a? 25 All right don't have anything to do here so 60 plus or minus here it's 50 B 36 3600 minus 4,100. Hmm. Notice what I have here. 3,600 minus 3,600. Obviously, it's zero. So, plus or minus square root of zero is 50. Now, notice that the square root of zero is zero. And this is my discriminant. If my discriminant is zero, then that means I only have one solution. So, here, 
and I'll do the long way so you can see what happens. 60 plus 0 or 50 or 60 minus 0 or 50. Notice that whether I add 0 or subtract 0, it doesn't matter, it stays the same. That's why I only have one solution. 60 over 50, which is 6 over 5. Same thing, 60 over 50, which is 6 over 5. In your solution set, you only need to show one, 6 over 5. There. Right. All right, last one for today. I'm going to go ahead and use the quadratic equation here, but notice that I don't have everything on the side that I need to. So I'm going to go ahead and move this 4x to the other side, minus 4x, minus 4x. There's no other terms that have just an x, so I just write everything next to each other. So 3x squared minus 4x plus 2 equals to 0. There, now I can get my a, b, and c. a is equal to 3, b is equal to negative 4, and c is equal to 2. So, negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Opposite of negative 4 is positive 4. So, 4 plus or minus square root of negative 4 squared minus 4. Oops. a is 3. c is 2. solve that one out. 4 plus or minus 6. Now here I'm going to have 16 minus 24. I'm going to stop right there. Notice what happens here. When you look at my discriminant, it says 16 minus 24. That's a negative number. I can't go on. I know that the square root of a negative number is an imaginary number. There are no solutions here. Um, and my answer, no real solutions. So make sure you always pay attention to your discriminant. Okay, if it was positive, remember you have two answers, so you keep going. If it's zero, all you're really going to do is divide these two numbers. And if it's negative, well, you have no solutions and you stop right there.